Okay, to be clear here, what we're trying to do address is how the, the common question, where does the swatch plate need to be to link up the uh, servo links to the swatch plate? And the typical answer is set the uh, servo arms so that they are at right angles and then uh, adjust to some height. And the, what is that height? Okay, the height needs to be as you move the swash, I'm changing the pitch on the blades here and you'll see the swash plate moves up and down and also it wants to rotate uh, left and right or forward and fore and aft uh, so the, it's kind of you're trying to hit a, uh, a floating target so what we're trying to do here is find a way to fix this swash plate so that you know uh, where to bring these links to. And the optimum place here is uh, when when the washout arms are parallel and opposite each other and the pitch of the blade is at zero. So you want zero pitch relative to the fly bar and the washout arms are opposite each other, the level and opposite. Not like this, not like this, but like this. Okay, and so how do we get it to hold like that? Uh, this technique has, uses uh, two pitch gauges and two pieces of what I call card style or uh, artboard, I think it's called. It's just a styrofoam, a thin styrofoam piece with uh, laminated on each side with some gloss paper. You can find this at any art shop pieces of balsa would work, almost any kind of uh, stiff material that's fairly lightweight. And you can be as elaborate about this or uh, unsophisticated as you want to. I'm, I'm kind of a duct tape sort of person and uh, so um, I'm using the duct tape method. The view on the, uh, on the rotor system with the uh, pitch blades fixed and uh, onto the onto the blades and uh, how the fly bar everything is perpendicular to each other. Now I'm going to add the um, pieces of cardstock. I'll do this here in steps. I fixed the first piece of cardstock st to the fly bar and the uh, left pitch gauge. I've got those two locked together and it's important that the uh, I've got some free space here where the, the uh, the arms off the fly bar aren't trapped. Okay, we'll move to step two. And now I've added the second piece of cardstock over on the right side, same way as the first. And uh, it doesn't have to be as big because it actually sits on top of the first piece of cardstock, so I don't have an interference problem with the uh, fly bar lever arm coming off on the on the right side in this picture. All right, now we'll look at it from uh, sideways on to kind of give you an idea of what we've got here. Here we are. We've got the uh, a side view of this setup, and you can see that uh, how the the uh, cardstock bridges the fly bar from underneath over to the two pitch gauges. And as I say, everything is locked into place, and because of that, the um, the uh, swash plate is basically rigid now. It will not move up and down or will it tilt left and right. Now I can can uh, cock it you know by uh, moving the uh, um, fly bar off normal. We'll put it back to where it belongs and then you can just bring or uh, adjust your servo lengths to they made up to where the the swash plate balls are and you're good to go and don't, it doesn't really require a, level, a separate leveling tool that uh, you have to kind of guess where the swash plate may be it is fixed as I said we've got the uh, blade set at zero degrees pitch and it's locked to the uh, to the fly bar and uh, consequently nothing um, uh, the swash plate has become rigid at this point and doesn't float like it did originally. 
Also note, look at the uh, washout arms. They're all level and opposite each other. That's uh, one of your key uh, points that we keep talking about at what needs to be where when you go to do your setup. Hope that uh, makes things fairly clear for you and I find this an easy way to set this up and it's a uh, one that once you have a handle on it it's not hard to do at all.